So I literally just finished uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor a couple minutes ago. While it's fresh in my mind, I figured, you know what? Let's do the review right here, right now. Man, one of the most unfortunate things that can happen is when an overall great game is severely marred by technical and performance issues. The long story short of it is I would not recommend people get this game on launch day. I think it'll eventually, you know, once it's patched and once it's fixed, be a really great game that a lot of people will enjoy. But right now, it's a risky proposition. Some of you might be having uh, a good enough time with the title. You know, you might have just the right setup that the game supports better. For my part, you know, on my PC, 3080 Ti with the latest Intel CPU, pretty modern hardware and it just struggles and it is enough of an issue that it did mar gameplay quite a bit not just even a little bit it wasn't occasional stutters here and there frame rate would fluctuate constantly sometimes at c 70 80 90s frame rate and then other times it dipped to 30s 40s 50s uh and sometimes it'd be momentarily high frame rate followed by momentarily low frame rate other times you know i'd have fairly good frame rate for a while and then it dipped to like 30s and 40s and it stayed there for some reason and then me turning down settings or turning up settings none of that seemed to make any difference whatsoever and then that's combined with the, all the different micro stutter moments throughout the game. And to call them micro is, I think, a bit of... I'm underselling the issue by calling it micro stutters because sometimes in the middle of combat, you know, there will be a consistent stutters that will essentially mess up my timing for attacks, parries, you name it. And a lot of times I see a lot of stutters happen when transitioning from one place to another, from one level to the next, or one area within an area to the other. Uh, it just feels like, I don't know if it's a shader compiling issue. Regardless of what it is, uh, stutters are constant throughout this game. Even on consoles, I tested it on PlayStation 5. I think quality mode is more stable, but performance mode, while the patches did improve performance compared to the review period where performance was real rough it still feels a little sturdy it still feels kind of unstable not quite there not as smooth as it should be i just simply cannot recommend this experience to people at launch i feel like if you play this game at launch and you happen to be among the many who will likely be experiencing this issue then uh, you know you're just doing yourself a disservice by playing this game in such a state because Everything else about this game is, you know, pretty good overall. I mean, it is definitely a really good sequel that expands on what the original did. Jedi Fallen Order is essentially a Souls-like Star Wars game that took the Metroid Prime formula when it comes to level design and kind of applied that while bringing in that Star Wars combat with the Souls-like elements infused in there. Yeah, they've essentially expanded upon that a lot more in this game, not just in terms of combat, but also level design, open world elements. This game is a lot more open. There are two planets in particular that will allow you to essentially explore and find side quests, talk to NPCs, do some favors. In fact, these open worlds are expansive enough where you're offered the ability to ride mounts and each one of the big open worlds, I mean, there are quite a few sections, both like visually very beautiful and varied, and also just a, a really cool setting that you can get lost in for a bit. Jedi Fallen Order was a relatively linear game with sort of Metroid Prime-esque level design, and, you know, Jedi Survivor very much still has that, but even those more linear levels feel a lot more expanded and, like, a lot more thought was put into the level design, and again, the open world segments just further extrapolate on that by allowing players to engage in some semblance of exploration, and as you gain more of the navigation tools, you'll have new areas open up because you're able to overcome certain certain obstacles that you weren't able to before, and you are rewarded for exploring and partaking in side quests and whatnot, that'll yield certain rewards, be it, you know, a cool boss battle that may give you a chest with a cool cosmetic. A lot of cosmetics in this game, by the way. It's one of the best things about this game is just how free-form cosmetic is. You find plenty of chests with cosmetics, be it, you know, different parts for your lightsaber, different parts for this blaster that you eventually get down the line for the blaster stance of your lightsaber. BD-1, your little bot can be customized. Cal himself, you can customize his facial hair, his hair, 
Uh, you can customize his shirt, pants, and, and then alongside that, you earn different materials for all of those things, different color profiles and whatnot. And so you can really go all out with customization, which is a neat reward for partaking in these side activities or exploring the world and finding these chests to loot. And then alongside that, you'll find things like health essences and force essences that will essentially increase your max health and your max force meter. You will find things like perks. There's this whole perks system now where you can essentially equip these passive buffs that will allow you to further shape your play style. And then beyond that, you've got the different combat stances in this game. You've got the ones that were in previous titles, but introduced in Jedi Survivor are stances like the blaster stance that essentially sees Cal use a combination of a lightsaber and a blaster. That's my favorite new stance. I basically, once I got that, I used that for the rest of my playthrough. There's a cross guard stance, which is basically your great sword stance in Dark Souls terms, where it's high damage, but very slow to swing. You know, big AOE and whatnot, the swings can cover a lot of area, but you have to time those swings very carefully. And uh, it's one that I wasn't jiving with as much, but I want to experiment more with this one. But either way, you've got all these different styles to play with. You've got the fast uh, double-wielding stance that allows you to guard in the middle of attacks. So if you want to do a parry focus build, you can go with that. And if you prefer just speed over power, that's a great one. And then you've got your standard, you know, single lightsaber on top of the double-bladed lightsaber, which is more about taking care of a lot of enemies at once. That was my secondary stance. You can have two stances equipped at a time, and my go-tos were the blaster and the double-bladed. And one cool addition to Jedi Fallen Order is that occasionally, companion characters will join you, and you can use their abilities every once in a while on a cooldown timer, and they'll fight alongside you, and that can make for some cool combat sequences. But overall, I'd say the feel of the combat, it's very familiar. There's definitely more to it now, but it'll feel very similar to what you played in Jedi Fallen Order. You've just got more things to play with. If you've played Jedi Fallen Order, you'll fall right into this one and feel right at home, which can be for better and for worse. Uh, I genuinely enjoyed Jedi Fallen Order's combat, but I always felt like it could have been refined. Uh, it, you know, compared to something like the Soulsborne series, the combat can feel a little floaty, not quite as responsive, not quite as precise. It can just be a little wonky sometimes, and I feel like generally enemy attacks aren't as well choreographed as they are in Soulsborne titles, where you can tell when the swing happens in the animation, whereas sometimes in Jedi Survivor, I'll be like, oh, I thought that was just him, like, moving. Uh, I thought that was just, like, uh, an animation, not, like, an actual attack and so it, you eventually get used to it you pick up on enemy animation cues but um it's just not as well done on that front so sometimes it can feel like you miss an attack because the game did a poor job of informing that an attack was happening so there's still elements like that where i'm like i wish survivor would have improved on that a lot more but generally jedi fallen orders combat worked well enough and it'll work well enough here it's just an expanded version of jedi fallen orders combat combat is pretty fun especially with the force powers that gives this game its unique identity when it comes to its combat system the force powers are just awesome push pull lift drop among others and uh, it'll really allow you to just kind of style on enemies in really cool ways. The progression system of this game is skill points based. You don't really put points into stats. You essentially just expand the number of tools and maneuvers you have at your disposal. Uh, you do, you know, get extra max health and max force meter and stuff like that. You can get that through skill points as well. So that's some semblance of increasing your stats a little bit, but generally, uh, combat-wise, you're not going to be doing more damage per se. It's just more about putting your skill points into the abilities that you're going to be using to make your combat experience better, to make you more efficient at combat and more versatile at combat. And those skill points are obtained by killing enemies, by exploring and finding things, by doing quests, you name it, by partaking in and main missions that'll fill up this leveling meter that will give you skill points though if you die uh, in between checkpoints in between bonfires or in this case in between meditation points you'll drop your souls in this case experience points and you have to go pick them up or you know risk losing the bar that you have filled up once you do get a skill point you retain that permanently but if you're almost there like the bar is almost filled up and then you die and then you end up dropping those experience points and you happen to die again then you're going to lose those experience points you have to build that meter up again very dark souls you got you know your estus or in this case your uh, stim packs again and just like Jedi Fallen Order, and every time you rest at one of these checkpoints, one of these bonfires, one of these meditation points, you'll heal back up, you'll restore the number of heals at your disposal, 
and it'll be the new checkpoint for when you die in combat. But enemies will respawn, and uh, it's about getting to the next checkpoint with a limited number of heals that you have until you get to the next meditation point, next bonfire, and mastering uh, the scenarios that will try to impede your path along the way. Uh, definitely a lot more forgiving and a lot easier than your typical Soulsborne title, but there are various difficulty modes. I play the highest difficulty mode. If you want a, a sort of a more challenging experience where you're going to have to try quite a few times to beat certain bosses, go for the highest difficulty. If you just want a smooth experience that gives you enough of a challenge but allows you to progress at a good pace, then just go for the normal mode. And then the other side to that gameplay is the exploration, the navigation. You'll be doing a lot of like wall running and jumping and dashing and using your hookshot to latch onto things to jump off. And uh, you're going to be doing combinations of these in a way where it feels like you're in this like interactive roller coaster ride almost. It is a huge part of the game and it can be a lot of fun. Some of the scenarios that they set up are really cool. I do feel like those segments can overstay their welcome sometimes or they're one too many of these wall running segments climbing segments whatever i wish there was just more emphasis on combat and i also wish there was more emphasis on just enemy variety i feel like the enemy variety is still lacking that was one area where i thought jedi fallen order could have improved on and uh, it just feels like we haven't quite reached uh, a good place for enemy variety with Jedi Survivor. I was fighting a lot of the same enemies and mini-bosses, even in the late stages of the game, so that could have been done a little better. Mixing things up a little bit here and there are environmental puzzles, some of which can be large in scale and involved, but they're not super complicated, they're not that hard to figure out. But they do help mix gameplay up here and there, and it just further highlights just how much more consideration there was to the level design of things, where things just cleverly wrap around, and the way things that weren't accessible before become cleverly accessible later on, while also allowing you to loop back around for shortcuts to other meditation points, and uh, it's all really well connected. But the big set pieces are super well done. Those are so epic in scale and in splendor and spectacle. Uh, those will really get your blood pumping and uh, there's just a lot going on on screen. Unfortunately, again, just the performance issues ruin these moments. Cutscenes as well. During cutscenes, uh, not only are the visual sometimes marred by pop-in or performance issues, but I've encountered a number of audio bugs that ruin certain cutscenes for me. No traffic. No traffic. No traffic. No traffic. Looks like this portal's under maintenance. As soon as we breach Guys. the surface, jump to light speeds. And uh, that was just not ideal for the narrative experience that this game was taking me on. The story of this game is pretty good overall. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like brilliant or anything. It definitely builds on Jedi Fallen Order. This is not a huge spoiler because it's established at the very beginning of the game, but essentially the group is kind of split up, the original crew from the original game, and I don't know how I feel about that. I felt like we just didn't get to spend as much time with the crew as I would have liked. You kind of have to go find the crew again. Fortunately, you get to meet all of them pretty early on, but I just they're not with you a lot, and you don't get to delve deep into them and, and their characterization and their arcs as much. And so it's a lot about more the plot and the MacGuffins you have to go after. Um, there's some themes that they do explore that I do like, but I feel like it could have just delved a little deeper. It feels a little too surface level. Um, I see what they were going for. There are some emotion moments that do land, though. And so overall, it's a good story that I feel like just need a little extra um The aspects of its structure didn't quite work for me. There's a time skip between Fallen Order and Survivor, and it feels like we missed out on a lot of that time period, and they don't delve into that as much. And so there are things that they reference in the present day about that in-between period where I'm like, well, I'm lost. Like, Cal Kestis is feeling what he's feeling, but I can't connect with him because he knows what happened in between that time period, whereas I just kind of have a vague idea. And so certain moments I feel just aren't as effective as a result, but overall still kept me going, still kept me interested throughout the whole game. And uh, there's some cool, definitely some really cool moments throughout this game. And some really nice emotional beats that overall did elevate the narrative experience. Uh, generally, I feel like if you like Jedi Fallen Order narratively, like 
Jedi Survivor is a good follow-up that you'll be interested to see through. And then on top of that, this game also allows you to essentially manage a saloon. You can go out there and find NPCs to recruit to liven up the saloon. You get to help out with building it, and so you find that the saloon gets fuller and fuller over time. There are a number of NPCs there who you can keep talking to as you come back to the saloon and explore more of their sort of backstories and their tales. And along the way, you'll find some mini games and some things to manage, like a garden or a fish tank. And so there's just a lot of cool stuff going on in this little microspace that is the saloon that just livens up the game and makes everything feel a lot more lived in. So you get the idea. This is the essence of Jedi Survivor, except add those severe performance issues that were not present when I played through Jedi Fallen Order way back when. And if you look at Steam reviews right now, you'll find that, yeah, it's not just me. It's plenty of people, enough people that this uh, warrants concern. And it's a shame that the game shipped this way because this game deserved better than this because it's so good once you get past the performance issues. But the performance issues are definitely there. And so I imagine we might have to wait a few days, a few weeks, maybe who knows how long before all of that gets sorted out and people can have the experience that this game was meant to be at launch had it been delayed for i don't know a couple more weeks however long this game needed to just work out these kinks this game i finished in roughly 25 hours doing a combination of main quest and side quest and playing on a higher difficulty that probably extended my playtime a bit i suspect that generally people take 20 to 25 hours to beat this game and then if you want to do all the side quests and just be kind of a bit of a completionist it might take you like 30 35 potentially 40 hours if you really delve deep into it but uh yeah it's a fairly chunky game for what it offers and uh i think uh once the technical issues get sorted out uh it'll it'll be a worthwhile experience just don't experience it right now in its compromised state wait until people generally give the okay that the game is in a good place now but yeah there you have it folks that's my review and overview of star wars jedi fallen order a game that i've been highly anticipating had it not been for the performance issues, it would have lived up to a lot of my excitement. Some certain areas where I feel like they didn't improve enough, especially where combat is concerned, still feels too much like Jedi Fallen Order, and they didn't extrapolate on, on the mechanics enough and just make everything feel a little tighter, a little sharper, a little just, uh, I don't know, more refined. But overall, this game is just a better, bigger fallen order to be further updated on more video game reviews stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out